the first to know in same TV. Cobra a J a Japon. On a lawyer po are much easier na in ye easy. Cobra a J a Japon a de and nema at two aquem trese. Hey NDC on propaganda in his a baby ye. On sooner on by Nanka woman him say. Yura, I friends say the vice president Baumia Enka Onya that slot to lead MPP. Na brand new history. Emra umunam no mo kono mo ba. Eti fo che 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 os ni padom. Na hui diwe amu pochi niswa. Na no diye ni person diye. I think say the best person of a Ghana now is Yura Doctor Alaji Mamudu Baumia. One of the best person. Na opposition idi eh because we a nema any time ya di yi ye ura ay friends John don't want him mama me pim de oni manifesto mpo oni hwe ngoko ngete ngete nema ngete ngete eno kan but ye yi ye ura doctor large mamud baumia quick ena ne eh friends the competing about now the manifesto are ready a call the final stage about and this they are not ready for power you are at opposition but no matter what they are not and therefore na enye asem ketua eh sema you are coming to japan and you are born in so no more called the northern region you know what you know it's support me pia the course and therefore you know what you know what you know what you know what you know of the ally yet case which occurred in 2014-2015. Why is it necessary to talk about his past, his past life in the Ghana Armed Forces? How does that connect to the ambulance matter that he's doing? You people are prosecuting Jakpa that he has caused financial loss to the state, occasioned financial loss to the state uh, relating to the uh, ambulance matter. Okay, so if he's occasioned financial loss to the state related to the ambulance matter, stay with the ambulance matter and demonstrate how he has occasion financial loss to the state. What is the point about his military stuff? Now, when we get to it, I will repeat the point that I've been making that sometimes time helps us to understand people's motives and the things that people do. Now, when we are getting to this part of the trial in the ambulance case, we are now beginning to understand why some people, especially some of the accused persons, wanted the trial curtailed. And why they hired Johnson Asidun Katia and Samiji Enfi without telling them the truth without telling them who they are, without telling them their character. They hired Samuel Jemfi and uh, Saidi Uketia to help the cause, to make this very political, to paint the case in political colors, green versus blue, so that Ghanaians will be divided in, along the political situation for the case. The purpose of doing all that, it appears, was to obscure the things that we are now discovering. Because somebody was aware that if this case travels the natural course, Ghanaians will begin to discover something that will make them very, very uncomfortable about some of the people. And this is, this is, the, this is the point. Because they knew that if the case travels its natural course, we will get to a place where people will now begin to wonder what really happened. And by the grace of God, we are getting to the place where people are seeing things that we didn't even know existed. Now, let's get to the touch screen and check it out. So today, uh, Jakpa and his uh, military background came up. I put up the evidence act here so that, as I was saying, people will understand why it's a life of somebody. So, for instance, if uh, uh, you have a case with Paul Adomotri and then you can go and say that, okay, when Paul Adomotri was in Presec, uh, da, 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 okay, Presec was I at the age of majority? Um, yes, yeah, some part of it, some part of it not, yes. So, so the age of majority, you know, sometimes uh, when the lawyers are speaking on radio and they say the age of majority, the media try to correct them and say maturity. The language that is used in the Matrimonial Causes Act is the age of majority. It's not maturity. 18 and above is called in the Matrimonial Causes Act the age of majority. That is the time that you can make a decision. So if I've gone beyond the age of majority, they can always bring what I did once I was past the age of majority and say that this is the character of the man. Let's look at the Evidence Act. It's in section 53. Uh, evidence of character not admissible to prove conduct. Okay. Evidence of a person's character or a trait of the character of that person is not admissible to prove conduct in conformity with that character or trait of character on specific occasion, except A, in a criminal action. Evidence of the character or trait of the character of the accused when offered by the accused to prove the innocence of the accused 
or by the prosecution to rebut the evidence previously introduced by the accused. Uh, viewers, I forget, sorry about the language, it's a bit very legal. But they're saying that the evidence of character is admissible in a criminal action where it has to prove something. Okay, so now we understand why this character is important. It's a criminal trial. And the, 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 the character is coming in as aid to the prosecution to demonstrate that the, the, the accused person they are dealing with, a Jaqua, has a very bad previous character. And that is perhaps what is evidencing, uh, what, what is being evidenced in the trial and what he evidenced in doing what he did, which has brought him to the court. All right. Updates from the ambulance trial today. Let's get on with it now. So Tadio Sori, lawyer for Richard Jaqua, subpoenaed the military secretary, Air Commodore Edu Jemfi, to speak to certain documents and provide same, which were documents that formed the basis for the dismissal of Jaqua from the Ghana Armed Forces. You remember that during his cross-examination, the Attorney General uh, raised the issue with Richard Jaqua that why were you dismissed from the Ghana Armed Forces? And then uh, he, he spoke about it. And then Jaqua had interviews with the media and told the media that he was completely innocent and that he was maltreated by the army and he has done nothing wrong. And that he told the media that his lawyers are going to bring the soldiers into the, into the court. They're going to bring the armed forces into the court for them to come and justify the letter they wrote, which I read here, signed by the learned uh, General Ahiaglo, who is passed to eternal glory. That's what Richard Jackpa said. He said that he was going to bring the soldiers. His lawyers were going to subpoena. True to his word, his lawyers did subpoena the military to come into the court. This is what happened. Lawyer for Jaqua, strangely, did not ask the witness to tender the evidence, but rather asked whether he, the witness, gave the documents to the attorney general, which questioned the witnesses answered in the, which questioned the witness answered in the negative. So, the, the, Tadio Sori, when the case came up today, and they had subpoenaed the, the army that come to us with these documents. When the army came with the documents in the court and present, and pre presented the documents to the court, Lawyer for uh, Jackpa did not ask the witness to tender the evidence. He didn't invite the witness that we want to add this to the evidence. Why didn't he do that? Lawyers do that to want to add it to the evidence when it will aid their case. When a lawyer sees that this material will aid my case, he will ask the permission of the court, my lord, we want to add it to the evidence. There may be objection from the other side. If there's no objection or if the said objection is overruled, the court will admit it in evidence. When the court admits it in evidence, it means it will form part of the judge's decision-making process. Now, Tadio Sori asked the military to come to the court because they believe that, and Jaqua has convinced them that whatever the military has documented about him is incorrect. And Jaqua told that to the media as well. So his lawyer confidently asked the military, subpoena them to the court. The military come to the court today. They have all the documents with them. It is presented to the court that this is the document. This is what happened. This way we'll go into all that. These are the things that occasioned his dismissal. Tadio Sori, who wanted the, the people to come to court, does not ask the witness any question. The witness speaks and he's now open for questions from all the lawyers. The lawyer who subpoenaed the witness does not ask the witness any question. It's not that it's never happened before, but it means something. It means something. It means that the lawyer was convinced that this material evidence that the military has brought to court does not aid the case of the prosecution. And that's why he didn't ask questions, because in asking questions, he would deepen the process, and then it would be, it would be more grave. The offenses that Dakwa may have committed against the military may be grave if you now ask questions and the guy starts to explain it. The attorney general, however, asks questions. The only question that Tadio Sori asked the military man was that, you, Mr. Kennel, are you the one who gave the documents to the attorney general? And the colonel said, no, I didn't give it to the attorney general. Eventually, it was found in the court that the documents were given to the attorney general upon request by the minister for defense. It was the Minister for Defense who handed over the documents to the Attorney General. But that's the only question that the story asked. That's the only thing he was interested in. That, are you the one who gave it to the Attorney General? And the, 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 the officer said, this is a military colonel, he's not a small boy, very senior officer. He said, no, I didn't give it to the Attorney General. And he didn't. Soldiers don't do that. Soldiers don't give, give documents. They give it to their boss. The soldiers work in a very meticulous way. They don't do that and give something to attend. No, no, no. They will give it to their boss. The army commander says, bring me the documents. You send it to the army commander. If he says, go and give it to the minister of defense, he'll go and give it to the minister of defense. If he says, go and give it to the military secretary, he'll go and give it to the military secretary. They don't, soldiers don't do that. They are not like that too. They are serious people. So I don't, I'm not sure what the lawyer was trying to get from the 
kennel. You are not going to get anything from the kennel. They come and they speak the truth. They put their documents and they are gone. That's about it. They, they don't have time for all those things. <laughs> anyway, so that's what happened. Let's move on to, to get more information. So Atufosin's lawyer, Aziz Bamba, also asked the witness no questions. It is Aziz Bamba on, on the TV. He also didn't ask any question. You know why he didn't ask any question and why they didn't want the witness that they had subpoenaed to tender the documents because they were sure that these documents are critically against the interest of Jakpa, the, the third accused. I don't know whether it will also be against the interest of the person, but the court will decide those things. The attorney general then asked whether the witness had brought the documents that Tadeo Sori had asked. The witness had had the witness to bring to the court, to which the answer was in the positive. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next level. All right. Now, what are these documents? What is that document we are talking about? This is a document. Now, we have to blare the document because it's not a document that we, we want to share. We, we are, we are soldier people. We are all soldier people. We, we understand and respect what the Ghana enforces that. The fact that it's come to the court doesn't mean we can show everything. But just for the evidence that we are quoting from the right material, this is the document. It was a 20th May document of 2004. What is in the document? The special report on Lieutenant RK Jaqua. One, he took official vehicle with the driver home and sacked the driver, leaving the vehicle in his home outside the barracks overnight. Well, looks like a little offense. It looks like it's minimal, but <laughs> for soldiers, it's important. He took a vehicle home, and then, so when they, when they report you, they say all of these little, little things that you've done. You remember when in secondary school, when you break the school rules, they take you to the senior house master, and then they tell you one, 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 what you've done. So the first one is that he took a vehicle with a driver home and asked the driver, leaving the vehicle, as the, uh, sacked the driver, leaving the vehicle in his home outside the barracks overnight. Number two, three officers all complained that Jakpa failed to return to post after undergoing special short training courses in Accra, but would rather go on a frolic of his own. Three, he got indebted to a Lebanese businessman to the tune of $400 when he was sent for peacekeeping operations in Lebanon. Okay. Six, a Ghanaian residing in Lebanon gave him money and items to be delivered for him. To, for, to be for him, that is that Ghanaian. It was only upon strong warning from command that he settled his debt and gave the money and items to the Ghanaian. Five, he was scheduled for orientation classes and he failed to attend most of the classes for no proper reason. Six, there are several undocumented complaints of indiscipline. Okay, now let's get to more of the matter on indebtedness. Lieutenant Jackpa was granted a loan of $300 from a unit PRI in 2004, however, failed to pay after several requests. The conduct was characterized as shameful, and therefore, it was requested that the loan he be deducted from his salary. Jackpa was not honorably released from the army because it would have been stated on his release letter. Two, the dismissal letters of Jackpa was given to the Attorney General by the Minister uh, for Defense. So altogether, these are the things that the military brought to the court. In terms of Jacques' character, he was recalcitrant. He didn't attend uh, lectures. Uh, they had some calls. He didn't attend. He was called. Why don't you attend? He went to Lebanon, came back owing some Lebanese businessman. He was owing this guy. He takes a vehicle. So that kind of behavior, that is what occasioned his release. So this is what the military came to say in the court. And they have tendered the document, the letter from the Ghana Armed Forces. The, the report is all there. The report on Jaguar is there. It's tended. And uh, this is what happened in court. So viewers, you can look at it. You can look at it and determine where we are going. So you can see now that there was a very important motive why people didn't want this case to go its natural course. Why they came to say that because of a phone call conversation, because of a meeting in Justice Kulendi's house, this is mistrial. The Attorney General has conducted himself. So we have to stop the trial. If the Attorney General misconducts himself, do you stop the trial? Attorney General can step aside and the DPP can go on. But their interest and concern was to stop the trial because they were clearly aware that if the trial proceeds this way, we will find out that, first of all, Richard Jackpa has benefited 700,000 euro of Ghanaian people's taxpayers' money. It's gone to his pocket for no work done at all. That money has already gone to his pocket. And then, this is military background. It's also there for people to see. If you put all of these things together, well, the court will make their final decision. We are not the courts. We don't know. But these are the things that are coming out from the trial. These are the things. And then when I come and stand and say, then Jaguar will send me a, a, a text message threatening me that you have time to redeem yourself. This is the kind of person he is. That report has been made. This is the kind of person he is. You have time to redeem yourself. Then he sends you a video of somebody shooting somebody. It's, it's on my phone. 
That's, 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 that's the kind of person that I see doing Katia wanted all Ghanaians to see as a paragon of virtue. I see doing Katia and Sami Jefi. You are John Muhammad's, uh, election, John Muhammad's uh, campaign. You are blemishing John Muhammad's campaign with this kind of material. This is a blemish to John Muhammad's campaign because the chairman of the party and the national propaganda secretary together held a press conference and sold off Richard Jackpa to Ghanaians as a paragon of virtue and that Godfrey Dami was a demon and that this is the, the, the virtue, the white light guy who is bringing, shining the light onto Godfrey Dami's darkness. This is the impression that they gave to Ghanaians that Richard Jackpa, this man here, this is, this is what they said. This is what they said. <laughs> anyway, these are the documents. These are the documents. These are, these are the documents. This is Richard Jackpa here. This, this is the matter. So as the case is going, I'm very excited today that the judge sort of laid it out the timetable on what they are going to do. Other people are going to appear. I can't wait for the uh, subpoena of uh, Alban Sumanu case for back being the right honorable speaker. He was minister of health at the time. He's going to be in the matter. We're going to hear what everybody will say. By the time we finish hearing everybody already, Richard Jackpa has told us that Setekwe and, uh, 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 Madam are very evil. So, uh, already that's where we are. Okay. The signal is to, is to, is to get it off now. It's, thank you very much.